It's Wes, welcome to this video. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Fujifilm GFX 100S. A brand new camera coming our way. And I'm gonna share with you 17 things I think you'll be interested to know uh, that I learned from watching the Fujifilm Global Summit this week. You're a beautiful person and a good person. And if no one has told you that today, let me be the first person to tell you that. All right, I have my little box of tricks here. I got my little personal fireplace here and it's kind of cozy in here. All right, so in no particular order, I'm gonna elaborate on some of the things that you might wanna know about the new Fujifilm GFX S, 100S, 100S. There's a 100 and there's a 50. So uh, first thing you're gonna to wanna to know, this is a lighter camera than the previous version. Now the previous version is um, it's a big camera and uh, that's one of the things that'll come up is is what Fujifilm has done with the, the body size and all that but it's lighter it's 500 grams lighter I don't use that system I don't know what grams are particularly it's a uh, half of a kilogram so a kilogram is 1.6 pounds so it's like a half pound lighter that's a lot that's a lot is that right one point six. it's like 0. 0.8 pounds yeah it's like 0. 0.8 pounds lighter that is absolutely incredible that's insane all right next thing you're going to want to know oop this one flew out so let's talk about this uh it is the weight so does this one really say lighter it does say lighter they're the same i only have 16 things to tell you all right uh the nub <laughs> all right so on the back of the X-T4 and like the classic cameras, the DSLRs, like the 5D Mark IV from Canon, there's a joystick. And the GFX 100S has an eight directional, not an omnidirectional, but an octadirectional nub. And it's kind of a lower joystick and you can press it diagonal so you move your uh, focal point uh, diagonally. So it's, it's gonna be more nimble and more easy to use whole lot more fun to shoot with. All right, so let's move on. Next thing. All right, video specs. One of the things coming out is 12-bit RAW recording. You can also do 10-bit 422 uh, internally. Uh, and so those are interesting. Now, the GFX 100S is not really something that people would probably buy primarily for video, but the video specs are impressive. So that's good to know. 12-bit RAW. You might need to upgrade your laptop or computer to keep up with that. All right, this is a surprise. 400 megapixels, what? 400 megapixels means the camera, if you have a static subject, will take multiple images and stitch them into a 400 megapixel image. Now, what is this for? Fuji says it's for institutions like museums who are doing archival work where they're documenting artwork or documents and saving them for posterity so that you have all this rich detail. So 400 megapixels is mind-blowing. How many shots is that? We're going to tell you when we get to the megapixel rating. All right, we have IBIS, six and a half stops or six? Can't read my own writing six stops of IBIS. So this is an improvement over the GFX uh, from the 100. The GFX 100 had five and a half stops. So this is even better IBIS. So they've cut down on the weight and they've also improved the IBIS. And I think the IBIS uh, unit is smaller. So that's pretty, pretty darn impressive. Again, that means a lot for videographers, but it also means you can shoot with shutter, uh, slower shutter speeds and get those captures. All right, the battery. So this is kind of cool, kind of cool. Battery smaller. So the old battery from the GFX is not used any longer. It's actually the same battery that's in the X-T4 and it's rated up to 460 shots on one battery. That's, that's really impressive. All right, let's keep moving on. What else do we want to know about the GFX 100S? Okay, it's a 100 megapixel camera. Boom, that's the big one. It's 100 megapixels. It's really a 102 megapixel sensor. And that means that it is a beast. Now, when we're talking about the cameras like the, the, the EOS R5 or uh, Nikon's the Z7, like these 45, 50 megapixel cameras, this truly is in another class. And we're gonna talk about that. That's actually one of these uh, tips here, uh, pieces of paper here. It's a different class of camera. 
Card slots, let's talk about it. Two, so you have two card slots, your regular SD cards, um, and so you are shooting a professional camera. If you believe all the hype about two card slots is a professional camera, you got that. All right, so GFX lenses. So I was really interested in this camera and I didn't really understand the difference because I'm new to Fuji. Um, it's, it's a different lens system. So it's the GFX lens. Um, and so you have to invest in new glass if you're shooting the X-T4 or something like that. You have to look at getting new glass. So that's something to consider. All right, what's on here? <laughs> Five frames per second. Five frames per second. We're getting down to the last third here. Five frames per second, what does that mean? Now think about this. If you're shooting 102 megapixels per image, then five frames per second is actually writing a huge amount of data in a second. So that's something to consider. So it's not like the X-T4 has like 30 frames per second. It's not like uh, that kind of beast, but it's another kind of beast handling all that data. Ooh, here's a big one. BSI, BSI. BSI CMOS. I sound like I'm talking in algebraic phrases. BSI is the type of sensor backside illuminated. Now I did quite a bit of reading and I wanted to make made sure I understood this. Um, I don't have a great explanation except that there's kind of two traditional setups. The BSI, uh, which has the backside illumination um, and basically, see, so there's a sensor and then there's a, a kind of a wiring harness or wiring that sits in front of the sensor in the traditional DSLR or mirrorless camera. And so that actually blocks the light. Something like 30% of the light doesn't get to the sensor because the wiring harness or is uh, blocking it. Flip that around and put those electrodes on the backside of the sensor and now you have more light able to reach the sensor. This means uh, better low light performance. Simply there's more light hitting the sensor. So why is this a big deal? <laughs> I did the research. Samsung came out with the NX1 in like 2014. BSI is like the first BSI DSLR. Um, they've had this technology for security cameras and, and a bunch of things, but there's complications with it that it made it not readily, readily available in all consumer electronic cameras. But then in 2015, Sony, the A7R2, a camera I once owned for a short time, didn't enjoy it uh, and I <laughs> let it move on its way but that was a, a backside illuminated sensor as well. And then I think the D850 Nikon in 2017 said, hey, we're gonna do the BSI sensor. And then so Sony did it and Nikon did it and Fuji Film in 2018 said the X-T3 is gonna be a BSI. Oh, that means the X-T4 I'm shooting on is a BSI sensor. So I don't know if it's that big a deal. Who doesn't have it? Canon. Canon doesn't have a BSI sensor. But last month, there was an article about a patent pending BSI sensor from Canon. So keep your eyes tuned for that. All right, enough of the mumbledy jumbledy. Uh, 100 megapixels, I already covered that one. That must've fallen back in the box. Better eye autofocus, or excuse me, better, better autofocus. I'm not gonna talk too much about that. It's just better. And um, here we go, nostalgic neg. So film simulations are something Fuji is known for and they've created another one to share in the GFX 100S. Now, will it be available outside of that model? Hopefully uh, we get some updates and you uh, get access to that. However, what is it? It's kind of a 70s look, some uh, vibrant colors, like uh, amber highlights, things, cyan skies, things like that. And there's an American photographer, I'll put his name up here if I can find it, uh, that it's kind of modeled after. So it's a, uh, kind of a, a retro look, but I, I saw the samples. I, I really dig it. It's cool. So that's not a tipping point, certainly, but it, it's cool. Uh, the body size is smaller by 30%. So that's a big deal. So the GFX 100, and they shrunk down into the 100S, and then better IBIS. I mean, all these things into a smaller body. It's, it's crazy. Oh, we only have like three left. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, 4K video. Not too uh, overwhelming there, 30 frames per second. Uh, it's no big like uh, slow motion camera, but the 12-bit uh, the raw recording is amazing. And uh, save this one for last. Second to last is uh, WR, weather resistant. Now the GFX 100 
was not weather resistant. And it's a very expensive camera, a 100 megapixel camera that you wanna do uh, amazing work uh, for high-end clients with or document amazing landscapes, not weather resistant. All right, so this one is weather sealed. So it's smaller, it's lighter, it's got better IBIS, it's weather uh, sealed. Um, it's amazing, and the last thing is the price. This is absolutely astounding. I don't even know who does this kind of thing. The last model, the 100, was 10 grand, and this one is coming out at $59.99, so right around $6,000. So they've almost cut the price in half, and they're putting out a better camera. It's crazy to me. I, I just think that's amazing. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. I'm happy to share these updates. I'm loving to learn about um, Fuji and what's going on in the world. In fact, there's a lot of exciting things across Nikon, Sony, uh, what's that other one? Canon, duh, uh, and Fuji. There's a lot of new developments this year. Um, there's a really impressive Sony camera if you're into Sony, so check that one out. And thank you for joining me. Hit that like button, subscribe if you're not subscribed. If you like anything about this video, hit a like and uh, leave me a comment and let me know, would you consider this? Oh, I forgot the biggest thing. They kept using the tagline, more than full frame. And so Fuji is APS-C, so we have this kind of crop sensor and then they don't make a full frame. They skip and they make a medium format camera. And so that's the big thing I was hinting at earlier that I wasn't really talking about is this is a medium format camera. So think of Hasselblad and things like that for 6,000 with IBIS, with 12 bit raw, with all these things. And it's truly amazing what they've done in a smaller, much more manageable, compact, portable, comfortable, hopefully, uh, body. So I'm definitely interested. I'm definitely interested. All right, see you in the next video.